I do uh, research in in couple of different areas, but my main area is computer networking. Uh, normally, when you think about computer networking, uh, internet comes to mind, and uh, Actually, internet uh, you can argue is one of the most complex man-made systems. Uh, but if you think internet is a, is a complex and large system, you know we will have to wait ten years and we will see something entirely different. You know that that's how the system, the field has grown. Uh, every year, basically things double uh, in complexity in, in speed. My my research actually is uh, aimed at uh, helping the internet move to the next generation and the generation after that. Uh, so we do this in in, in different ways. Uh, for example, you want to uh, instead of using slow speed links, you want to increase the uh, network speed, uh, bits per second. And also, you, when you go to these high speed networks, you can't really uh, use the same protocols and same techniques. You have to come up with these new techniques. So today, the internet backbone operates uh, at several megabits per second. And in, in future, we will have this internet backbone operating at uh, gigabits or tens of gigabits, or even maybe 10 years down the road, it could even be approaching terabit per second. So it is like having this uh, this uh, you know wide pipe that carries information. So in in the past, uh, if you remember uh, mainframe computers, you know they used to occupy these large rooms, and now we have these small computers distributed everywhere. So because we have the internet, actually we you know we we felt that we can we can do the same thing in in other fields as well. So uh, in terms of uh, radars, you know right now people use uh, these large radars. That cover large areas, uh, consume very high power, and, and and require a lot of overhead. So by using internet, we felt that we can we can actually uh, change the way even the radars are implemented. So so as a result, we are working on a joint project with some other universities. Uh, so there's this uh, engineering research center funded by the National Science Foundation that involves uh, the Colorado State University, University of Massachusetts. University of Oklahoma and uh, Puerto Rico, and what we do there is basically uh, replace this this large radars with a large number of small radars that are networked together. So since we have the networking technology now, these radars that are distributed can actually operate like a single radar, but at at a much lower cost. And not only that, they have much better functionality. You can have uh, radars, different radars operating in different modes that is not feasible with with the previous configurations. I also work on uh, VLSI testing. Uh, so I collaborate with a faculty member in computer science, uh, Professor Malaya, on uh, VLSI testing. Uh, so the idea of VLSI testing is to test these integrated circuits that have millions of transistors, uh, actually tens of millions of transistors inside them. And you don't have access to all the things inside in order to test these devices. So uh, in the past, we have come up with uh, you know, several uh, techniques that are being accepted by industry and, and are being used. Uh, one of the examples is uh, what I call cluster-based IDDQ testing. Uh, this allows you to uh, take the reliable testing techniques that are kind of becoming uh, obsolete with the next generation of integrated circuits, uh, but there is no really no replacement test technique. So some of the techniques that we have developed allow actually extends the lifetime of these present test techniques uh, for deep submicron integrated circuits. Uh, we have also developed a uh, test technique called anti-random testing uh, that you know, increased coverage uh, without actually looking at the structure of the integrated circuit. Yes, yeah, in, in the computer network uh, research lab, uh, we currently have uh, seven PhD students and seven master's students. So it's a fairly large group. Uh, that means that we have more than the critical mass necessary for people to interact with each other and learn from each other. It is not like working in, in isolated projects. At the same time, you know, each of the especially at the PhD level, each student has uh, his own uh, problem that, that he's working on. And there are instances where you know, I, uh, a master's student and a PhD student work together, the master's student doing the implementation and algorithm, and the PhD student doing more theory-oriented theory work. The research that we do in computer network uh, research lab uh, has been funded uh, in the past by various agencies, including NSF and DARPA. And we have also been working with with companies, uh, so we have worked with large companies like Agilent Technologies, and uh, also uh, I have worked with uh, small startup companies, especially during the dot-com boom. Uh, you know, there was a lot of interaction with with, with startup companies. But working with these companies actually uh, affect us very positive in a, in very positive ways. Uh, for one thing, we can go look at the way the things are done in industry, and then we can 
try to extrapolate, you know, okay, what are these guys going to need in 10 years down the road in order to uh, move this technology forward. So I think working with industry kind of uh, keeps us, keep one foot on the ground without letting us float in the air, you know, in, in terms of theory. But